and welcome, Minister. And can I first of all obviously welcome the publication of the bill uh, and the, any measure that uh, reduces the cost of health care for, for any citizen obviously is to be welcomed. And I also want to support and welcome the introduction of free contraception for women aged 17 to 25 and to commend the Minister for uh, very good work that has been done over the last year on women's health care especially, notwithstanding differences we would have had on the National Maternity Hospital. Um, I do accept that we've seen some very significant changes and a lot more to be done in that area um, in, in recent times. Um, Minister, for me, there's three principles which should underpin all of our approaches to healthcare. Accessibility, uh, and we all know the challenges that patients have in relation to accessing healthcare at every level, long wait lists, unacceptable in so many different areas, long wait times now in emergency departments, people waiting longer at this point in time to access uh, a GP. All of those access issues are, are really important, but affordability is also important, as is accountability. And I think the affordability and accountability pieces are actually linked, uh, and I'll tell you why. So obviously, the measures that you introduced and will be uh, uh, implemented as, as part of the legislation which has been introduced are welcome, but they're only baby steps in what's needed to really move to a single-tier health service and a, a universal healthcare system. An awful lot of the big commitments that were given, like universal GP care for all citizens, we have to admit we're a long, long way away from realising all of those objectives. Uh, we have more to do even in relation to the inpatient hospital charges. It's only for children. Uh, I would like to see it abolished for, for all patients. We have the issue of car parking charges. Uh, we have the prescription charges. Uh, the drug threshold is still too high. I know it was brought down in the last budget. So there's, there's an awful lot more that needs to be done to reduce the cost of healthcare. Uh, but for me, the biggest issue obviously is uh, realising the objectives of, of Shalanta Care and getting to a point where we, we truly have healthcare delivered free at the point of delivery as much as we can, certainly in primary care and uh, acute care. And I think we have a long road to uh, travel, Minister. We have a difference of opinion as to whether or not there is a need for an emergency budget. What I would have preferred to have seen from, from you and from the government over the last number of weeks is not bringing in legislation to provide for uh, provisions that were actually made back in the last budget. Last October, these commitments were given that we would see the rollout of contraception for women of that age. Last October, in the budget, you announced that children aged six and seven uh, would have access to GP care. We're still waiting for it. And last uh, October, uh, other commitments were made. And I know in the last round of uh, cost of living measures, the provision was then made to reduce the cost of inpatient uh, charges. But a lot of these measures take far too long to be brought in. Uh, and that's because uh, of the contractual issues that have to be negotiated to, to realise and deliver uh, some of, of uh, these issues. Uh, today we're hearing that Electric Ireland are going to increase their prices by at least 10%. Inflation is going to hit 10%. So obviously everything that we can do to reduce the cost of living for, for families is really important and healthcare is obviously uh, part of that, Minister. Can I say that there is a, because we're concentrating today on, on children and the fact that these uh, hospital charges will be uh, abolished for children, there is a wider piece of work that needs to be done in relation to the cost of a child being sick. And I know this is an issue that you would have raised yourself when you were in opposition and one that I would like to work with you on because I've met many groups that represent parents of, of children who are in hospital for long periods of time and there are very significant additional costs whether it's overnight accommodation, sometimes that's provided in hospitals, sometimes it isn't. Uh, uh, parents having to take time off work and then there's, there's no entitlements for them and it's, it's really, really difficult. And I think we need to look at the cost of a child being sick and do much more for, for, for the families of, of children who find themselves in, in, in that position. And as a parent yourself, and I'm a parent, if your child is sick, uh, you want to make sure that you can do everything possible to support that child. You shouldn't have to worry about all of the costs that go with it. Uh, and unfortunately for, for many uh, parents, they do. And I think there's a huge amount more, uh, Minister, that, that needs to be done in that area. You mentioned, obviously, in your opening statement, uh, the rolling out of uh, free GP care for seven and eight-year-olds, and that is welcome. But there is a very important caveat 
that you obviously put in your opening statement, which is we don't know when that's going to be implemented. And that's part of the problem. That has been announced and re-announced and re-announced. We in this House brought forward legislation that enabled for all children under 12 to have free GP care. We haven't even got past eight yet. And that's because you're still stuck in negotiations with uh, the IMO. What needs to happen, Minister, and, and, and I say this genuinely to you, because as somebody who wants to be in your position one day uh, and will have to answer, I'm sure, very similar questions as to how quickly we deliver on all of these uh, objectives, we will never deliver and never realise universal free GP care unless we increase capacity, unless we have a plan to increase training places, which I know has been done and is being done, but we have to do more, but also unless we put in place a new contract for GPs, a modern contract that reflects a modern practice. And if we do that and we, and we put the architecture and the foundations in, then I think we can move to expand universal GP care more quickly. And what I would like to see is a, a plan, a, a long-term plan negotiated with the IMO. Here's what we're going to do. Here's the new contract. Uh, here's the direction of travel. And the quid pro quo is that you now sign up to a realisable objective of getting to universal GP care for all, rather than this piecemeal negotiations by month or by year, and we're not getting anywhere with it. So that caveat has to be put on it, that you can't tell us today when that will be delivered, yet it's been announced and re-announced and re-announced, and unfortunately, Minister, that's, that's just uh, part of it. I also want to just deal with the issue that you raised as well about innovative medicines and the reimbursement process, because I've engaged with a lot of people who work in this area. We're very fortunate that we live in a country where many of these high-tech drugs are made. Um, huge amounts of innovation done in the pharma sector, but also in healthcare generally. I have to say, I'm blown away when I go into some of our hospitals and some of our training colleges, and I see the innovation and the talent that we have right across our health services. We see it also in innovation in terms of new technologies, new drugs, new medicines, and Ireland is a leader in that. But we're not always a leader in those drugs being made available for patients. And you're right that more medicines have been made available in recent times. And you are right in that more funding was made available and funding is part of it. But I would also say that the reimbursement process itself is very cumbersome and it takes far too long. When you look at the process, and I know your uh, staff and staff in the HSE teared our head out when they look at the number of PQs that we put in uh, week in, week out. But we put them in because we want to get information, we want to understand how processes work. And I put a lot of PQs in recently on this issue to better understand the process. And it is really cumbersome and it needs to change. Uh, it, that's part of it. Funding is part of it, Minister. But how we arrive at that decision, I think, is also uh, part of it. You'll be aware that CAFTRIO, uh, the drug for children with cystic fibrosis is one of those issues that uh, parents are campaigning on. Uh, and I know that we can come in here every week and talk about some drug. There's always going to be a drug that's contentious and that uh, you know, is going to be part of a, a hot political debate and we can't do everything. But obviously this is, is one that, again, has got understandable traction because of the fact that these children will benefit from it. And yet it's still stuck in the process and we, we don't know when a decision will be made uh, on that particular issue. So I just want to conclude, Minister, in saying that uh, we have an awful lot more to do to reduce the cost of healthcare. Um, I don't believe that there is any roadmap that I can see to delivering a universal healthcare system. Uh, again, when I'm talking about parliamentary questions, every single PQ I put in when I ask, how much is it going to cost to remove private healthcare from public hospitals. I'm told we don't have the costs. It's too complicated. We don't have the formula to work it out. But yet it's an objective of, a, of the Oireachtas as part of Schlontecare. When I ask how much will it cost to deliver universal GP care for all citizens, again I'm told we can't cost it. We don't know how much it will cost. Uh, and not only uh, can we not tell you how much, but will you, if you say it is, provide it to me. And I will send you on about at least 50 parliamentary questions I've got back where I've been told we cannot provide a cost. I'll send them on to you, every one of them, so you'll see that I've put them in time and time again. I've asked the question, I don't know how many different ways, and I can't get a costing. Um, and what I'm told is that we have to look at demographics, we have to look at increased demand, which is all true, but that work should be done. But what's more uh, uh, difficult for me is that there is no time frame. When you ask, well, what is the time frame to realise this? There is none. 
So these are issues I would like to work with you on uh, as Minister for Health, because whoever's in, in, in your seat, uh, these are big issues for us to deliver on. And I'll finish by saying that an accessible, affordable and accountable healthcare system, I'm sure, is one that we would all like to see. Good morning.